Hi, this is Dan Drosik from SimTech. Today we'll be going through an Artec EVA 3D scanning demo where we go from start to finish. I'm going to go ahead and start with a preview of the object that we're going to scan. As you can see, here's the object that we're going to scan. It's a mask. In this view, we can adjust texture brightness and set it to where we want it. In this case, I'm going to set it a little dark. And to actually cap start capturing the data, we want to make sure that, that the light bandwidth, as you can see on that green slider, is kind of between the 760 and 640. Um, that's where it's most accurate. This is judging distance. So as I come closer, that goes further away. As I get further back, that goes further down. So we're going to start capturing. Now I'm just moving the scanner around the object itself. And now I'm going to start moving the object. It's on a turntable. Either way works. Just for this confined space, the turntable works really well. So I'm just rotating the object here, keeping the scanner at a fairly fixed position. I went ahead and overlapped my geometry just a little bit so that it was able to fuse the start and the finish point. I also want to capture that bottom portion of the chin that is hidden by the turntable. That's the second uh, scan that we're going to do. So now I've, I've laid the subject down here, and I'm just going to capture the bottom of his chin. So now I have two scans. Now as we're scanning, a rough alignment is done. As you can see, it roughly lines up the scans and makes a image out of it, so we can kind of see if we've missed any areas um, as we're scanning. As I get into other tools like the editor, it goes a, it go it actually just does a fine serial registration for us. So it's further lining the scans up closer to each other. And this is all done very automatically. Okay. So our scans are just grossly misaligned at this point. Um, that's fine. We can go into the alignment tab. And there's some really cool features here. There it allows us to pick three points on our main model here and then on our scan here. We're just going to pick three points that are similar on the models, the nose and the eyebrows, and press enter. It goes ahead and lines those scans up for us. We can get rid of any excess geometry that we actually don't need any longer by going into our eraser. We can do a cutoff plane selection. This is handy for when you're scanning on a flat surface like a table. We'll try that one more time. We're just going to do the scan with the flat table itself so we don't get rid of any needed geometry. There we go. And erase that. That gets rid of most of that. In the other scan, we're going to erase the table as well. We can also use another tool in here that's a 2D selection. This allows us to just do a paintbrush and essentially paint the parts that we don't want to keep any longer. So it's very easy to get rid of unneeded polygons. We can use that. We can use some automated tools to get rid of some of this excess that's laying outside the scan as well. So once we've done this, we're going to do a global registration. This takes our two scans and all of our frames, so we have a scan 1 and scan 2, these are two different sessions, and many different frames inside of these scans, 337 frames inside first scan, and 39 scans inside the second scan. Global registration will give all of these scans a centralized location or world origin, and also help to further line them up and uh, increase the accuracy. You also see when we're taking a look at the scans, there's a quality number, and that number um, represents the quality of each of the frames inside the scan. And it's a algorithm that's used, but in general, it's the scans that are closest to a, a normal line through the scan itself. 
So it went ahead and uh, lined those up for us really nicely. We're going to run a outliers removal. This gets rid of any small fine geometry that's sticking up from our model that really shouldn't be there, also known as noise. So got rid of a lot of that. Also got rid of some of the small flyers that we had laying outside. We're going to do a fast fusion for illustrative purposes. Fast fusion quickly makes one surface out of the many different frames that we've taken. So up here we have 39, 3, 337, and in this fusion we have 1. I'm going to run a smoothing algorithm to smooth this fusion out a little bit. Um, I'm also going to fill any sort of small holes inside of it to make it watertight. That was with some of the automated tools on the left hand side here. Now, some more really important tools are associated with the model and simplification of the polygons. So if we take a look at a different view like wireframe, we can see there's kind of a pattern here that we really don't want. It's kind of like a fingerprint. It's where the polygons are close together. Um, it's unnecessarily heavy. So we can actually run a simplification to where we're going to actually reduce the number of polygons inside of this mesh. So as you see, if we do control Z, we went from having a fairly tight weave and then it actually optimized the model for us. Now we can dictate how many polygons are actually going to be left here. In this case it's 300,000. So you can change this number as you need. Obviously each project will be slightly different. So after this point, I'm going to run a remesh. That'll take this kind of uh, fingerprint or topographical map looking uh, polygons and line them up better and make them more uniform. This will also reduce some of the number of polygons that are used and lighten the file even further. This will help us later when we're importing or exporting in different file formats or applying texture maps. This process takes a little while, but you'll see immediate results from that resulting in a much cleaner surface. Both of these processes do alter the geometry slightly. When we're talking about organic forms it's really not enough to notice. So if we want to keep them in their original state with all of the polygons intact, that is entirely up to the user. So we did a remesh there and it was able to line all the scans up, or all the polygons up, and uh, create a very nice surface out of that. So at this point, we're going to go into the repair, uh, not the repair tool, but the uh, texture tool, and apply a texture to the geometry that we've created. We're using both the scans uh, as reference points. The scanner itself will pick up, uh, will take essentially color photographs and then automatically map those in this process. This is a fairly resource intensive process, but it shouldn't take us too terribly long here. This is one of the really unique features about the Artec the fact that it's a handheld color 3D scanner. It uses both color and geometry to track its location, a very, also a very unique feature. This allows us to do surfaces that are traditionally very difficult, like shiny surfaces, black surfaces. So at this point we can actually uh, modify the color of the model itself to better match uh, the actual physical model. That turned out pretty good. Go ahead and apply that and we're done with the model. Uh, it's had a texture applied to it which we can turn on or off. And it's one continuous mesh. You'll notice some gaps here. These are some holes that we could fill in a uh, that our hole filling routine didn't actually cover. Um, that's the edges application. We can actually run that and it selects that hole there and goes ahead and fills that up for us. So now we have a water type model that we're ready to machine or 3D print or bring into a modeling program.
Alright, that concludes it. 10 minutes overall for that time. Thank you.